Good evening friends. Here are some updates on the construction of the current border wall on the US-Mexico border. The Trump administration has cited national security risks because of the coronavirus as a reason in its attempts to seize land from private landowners where the border wall will cross through. Efren Olivares, legal director for Texas Civil Rights Project, said recently. Since the month of March, the government has filed 24 new condemnation cases to try to take private property from South Texas landowners. That's more than they had filed in the previous eight months. The coronavirus has helped push the Trump administration efforts in pushing for seizing land through eminent domain procedures. Oliviers added that the Texas Civil Rights Project is alarmed that the government has doubled down on its effort to continue building border walls despite the pandemic. He also added, in fact, we have clients in condemnation cases who live at the property where the government wants to build a border wall. And while they try to shelter at home, we have a client who's 75 years old. And the government is trying to send out surveyors and construction crews to his home property as part of this effort to continue building. There are currently 657 miles of primary barriers and approximately 50 miles of secondary barriers along the nearly 2,000-mile U.S.-Mexico border. So far, as of June 19, 2020, 210 miles of the new border wall has been constructed, over 300,000 tons of steel has been used, and 444,000 cubic yards of concrete. President Trump has stated that a border wall is necessary in order to protect Americans from illegal immigration. And during a rally back in February, he referred to the coronavirus as another justification for his wall, stating, we must understand that border security is also health security. Much of the land needed to complete the project is owned by American citizens. The government has been leveraging eminent domain to attempt obtaining private-owned land. Robert McNamara, a senior attorney at the Institute for Justice, described eminent domain as one of the government's most fearsome powers. Once a landowner receives notice, from the federal government, they typically have 21 days to respond. It is a long and complicated process, landowners still have rights, even if they receive eminent domain notifications. And because there are no Miranda rights in these proceedings, many are unaware that they can say no. Some landowners might want to do that, and that's their right, Olivares the legal director at a Texas civil rights organization said. But if they don't agree with it, they don't have the obligation to sell their property. If a landowner refuses to relinquish their property over to the federal government, the government then has to prove three things. Number one, that they have the authority to take the land. Number two, that it would be used for a public purpose. Number three, and that it would be paying for the property at fair market value. The value aspect, however, is where many landowners often feel undercut. We're seeing the government really undervaluing the property, insisting on paying only $100 for up to 18 months of access to these properties to do surveying and other preparatory work, Olivares said. Olivares noted that not all of the land that the government is trying to build upon is right along the Rio Grande. Some of it spans up to a mile north of the river. In Stark County, in particular, the proposed path goes through significant residential areas. We're talking about dozens of landowners, including an orphanage, a nursing home in Stark County, who are at risk of being destroyed by this border wall. What Olivares and his organization are trying to argue for their clients is that the federal government's attempts to obtain their land are not a matter of urgency amid this pandemic. On other news, the Trump presidency is testing part of the U.S.-Mexico border wall with black coating, a move that comes after President Donald Trump expressed his desire to paint his signature wall black, but also could cost an extra $1 million per mile. The U.S. CBP is painting about 450 feet of new border wall in San Luis, Arizona, using a coal tar epoxy in an effort to assess the operational benefits, according to the agency. The border agency is testing for a coating which will extend the life of steel. It will also be tested at the U.S. Border Patrol Academy in Artesia, New Mexico, later this summer. If successful, the coating will be used in other locations as well. Painting the wall comes at a cost, but it could prolong the life of steel used, so it could actually save money in the long term. Depending on what paint is used, it could increase the cost up to $1.2 million per mile, the official said. 
If paint is applied to all 450 new miles, that should be built by early 2021, the price tag would be roughly $500 million. Since January 2017, the administration has planned for around $15 billion, to build approximately 731 miles of border wall, including around $6.3 billion from Department of Defense funds, and $3.6 billion from military construction funds. According to CBP, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers identified the coating as a way to extend the life of steel, when properly maintained. CBP is responsible for questions about wall design, said a spokesperson for Army Corps of Engineers. Last year, members of the U.S. military, were tasked with painting parts of one mile of the wall, along the southern border in California, to improve the aesthetic appearance of the wall, according to an email sent by the Department of Homeland Security, to members of Congress at the time. The email from DHS, also said there may also be an operational benefit to painting it, as individuals appeared to have greater difficulty, scaling recently painted bollards in Nogales, Arizona. Anyways, thanks for watching, support us by subscribing, or buying a t-shirt, and remember. Peace through strength.